Good morning and welcome to our Faith Discovery Zone here at St. John's United Church of Christ. And I am joined today by Miss Robin. And it's good to see each and every one of you here today, whether you've joined us here in the sanctuary or you are somewhere out in cyberspace. Today, Pastor David and I will be the members of our Faith Discovery Team, leading us on a journey of exploration in the Bible. Yes, that's right. Today, we're going to be looking into God's Word, like we always do, and we're going to explore the topic of love. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, it looks sort of like a heart <laughs> there. It looks like something happened to my hands. So today we're going to explore the topic of love, and that's why you who have joined us in the Faith Discovery Zone are our faith explorers. Isn't love more appropriate for Valentine's Day, Pastor David? Well, that's a good question, Miss Robin, but not necessarily because the Bible is full of stories about God's love, most especially the stories of Advent, late in Advent. We're the fourth Sunday of Advent, and Christmas are about God's love. Well, I'm really excited about today's topic, so let's head into our imagination station. All right, let's get over there. Welcome to the zone where we learn about God's way. We discover Jesus' pathway each and every day. We look into the Bible reading stories from God's word. We learn to trust in Jesus and then practice what we've heard. God's presence is amazing. God's spirit lights the way, guiding each and every footstep. We move from day to day. Well, kids, we're going to join together in our prayer. And last Sunday, we did something fun. We did our echo prayer. And so, Miss Robin, do you think you can do an echo prayer with me and with our kids today? I in think that zone? sounds fun, yeah. All right. So I'll say it, and you do what? I'll you, repeat it. That's right. You're the echo. Okay. Let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Be here with us now. Be here with us now. Help us to listen Help us to listen. Help us to learn. Help us to learn. Help us to discover. Help us to discover. All of your surprises. All of your surprises. For our lives. For our lives. Amen. Amen. I changed that up just to check and see if Miss Robin was paying attention. <laughs> and she was. She was really, she was doing a good job. Hey, kids and adults that are joining us today as we begin our discovery time, I want to remind every one of you that we are now at the fourth Sunday of Advent. These past few weeks, we've learned about all of the different topics of Advent, peace, hope, joy, and now today we're going to talk a little bit more about love. And I made something to show you. Well, actually, Miss Robin and I both made something, a little homemade craft. We made, instead of a paper chain of people, we made a paper chain of hearts because, after all, the heart symbolizes love. So, um, you want to see what's on mine? Yeah, yeah. You have Kaylee, Julian. Kylie, yeah. Or Kylie, Julian, Juno, and Pizza. Yeah, those are my three grandchildren and, well, you know, one of uh, favorite food, you know. I mean, uh, there's other things that gotta I love. Gotta love your pizza. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Well, not everybody, but Ooh. a lot of people love pizza. Yeah. I do. So that's what I put on mine. What, okay. what did you put on yours? Well, I have Eric and Ethan. They're my two boys. Oh, yeah. I had them in confirmation. I have, I have Maddie, who's my granddaughter. All right. I have family, including my husband, Tom, and my parents. And then I have Jesus. Oh. Oh. How could I forget about Jesus and God? Now I feel silly in my heart. I didn't put Jesus or God on my paper chain of hearts and things that I love. It's okay, Pastor David. God loves us so much even when we sin, disobey him, or even forget to pray, or even forget to say that we love him. You know what, Miss Robin? This is a time of year when we can get so busy with Christmas stuff, with activities and visits to family and decorating and going places and programs that we can almost forget 
honestly about Jesus, even though it's Jesus' birthday we're celebrating. But thankfully, Miss Robin, God does forgive us when we forget about God. God loved us so much that God sent his son to be on earth with us. Jesus was so committed to God's love in that he even died because of his love of God and us. Well, because of that, we get to experience the love of Jesus. You know, Miss Robin, I can think of one thing that we don't need to see the love of God. And what's that? Well, it's this thing I'm holding right here. Mm. Do you know what this is? It's a magnifying glass. Yeah, and what does it do? Makes things bigger. Yeah, like I can see the print. Hmm, that helps me like... <laughs> Wow, yeah, I can see what's written here now. It, it says, what do we use a magnifying glass for? <laughs> well, it magnifies things, and it makes them bigger and easier to see. I don't see how a magnifying glass is the topic of love and Jesus. How do they connect together? Kind of sounds like a start to a bad joke, if you ask me. Yeah, what did the magnifying glass and Jesus do for love? Yeah, it kind of sounds like a bad joke. <laughs> well, I think it will become clearer to you about this magnifying glass when we hear the Bible story. So why don't we read it together? It's in our notes. So it's, it's called Mary's Good News. So why don't you start, and maybe we can alternate some of the reading. Okay. Sound good? Sitting alone in her room, the young girl, Mary, thought about the amazing news she had received. A few days before, an angel told Mary that she would have a baby and the baby would be named Jesus. The angel also told Mary that her relative, Elizabeth, was going to have a baby. A woman as old as Elizabeth rarely became pregnant. But both of these messages from the angel were surprises. Now at first, Mary wasn't quite sure what to do. She was excited and anxious. Who better to tell this amazing news than to Elizabeth? Besides being related, they were actually close friends. So Mary quickly gathered her belongings and began to journey off to the home of Elizabeth and Zechariah. She hurried out the door and down the pathway. Finally, Mary sped down the last hill and toward the home of Zechariah and Elizabeth. As she got closer to the house, she began calling, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, it's Mary. I have news. As Mary spoke, Elizabeth felt her baby move inside her. Mary entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. Elizabeth exclaimed, You are blessed and your baby is blessed too. Then the two women hugged and Elizabeth asked, Mary, why have you traveled here? It's a long ways to come. Why am I so special that you came to see me? The moment I heard your greeting, my baby leaped within me for joy. You are blessed because you believed God's message. Then Mary told Elizabeth about the visit from the angel. She told her about the angel's message. I have to have a baby whose name will be Jesus. The angel told me that you are going to have a baby too. It is such an amazing news. I knew I had to tell you. Wow. So, do you get the connection now, Miss Robin? I think so. Mary found out that she would give birth to Jesus. She loved him so much that she followed God's command and raised Jesus. But there's still nothing, still nothing about a magnifying glass. Oh, do you know what, Miss Robin? I forgot to ask you to read the final few verses. Can you read that section? I'm so sorry. I think sure. there's a little bit more there to the story. Well, Mary said, it's such amazing news. I am filled with joy. I want to sing to God. And she sang out, you are a great and wonderful God. You, God, have given me a special gift. You are a great and wonderful God. Mary and Elizabeth celebrated the joyful news together, and they talked and talked and got ready for the birth of their babies. And several, after several months, Mary returned to her home. 
So what you just read is a special section called Mary's Song. And this is where she's talking about her love for Jesus and promises God to nurture Jesus and tell others all about him. So having that section now, let's listen to this song that will help us to make that final connection of love and Jesus and a magnifying. My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul the Lord, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. the word magnify in there yeah. I thought maybe you were gonna say that Mary was walking around with a magnifying glass <laughs> no. now I see the magnifying glass connection is not a physical one but rather an action Mary magnified Jesus and she spoke about him and all he would do that's exactly right she explained to the people that he would save them and make them better he would help those who are lesser in society, and all, together they would make the world a better place. We could learn from Jesus how to love and from Mary how to magnify Jesus. That's right. Jesus is the reason that we celebrate Advent. Not just with his birth, but look at these Advent candles. They all represent different things. Hope, peace, joy, and love but they are surrounding one candle in the middle. Now, what does the middle one represent? I'm going to go out on a limb and say, Jesus? <laughs> That's right. The middle candle in our Advent wreath, that white one that you can see in the picture here, is the Christ candle. And Jesus is the light of the world. And without Jesus, we wouldn't have the strength or the good ideas to fill the world with hope, peace, joy, and love. Jesus is the one that helps us to connect all those things out to the world. Wow, Jesus is so powerful. No, mo no wonder Mary wanted to magnify all of those things to us. 
I have so many times in my life that I experienced hope, peace, joy, and love. Mm -hmm. None of that would be possible without Jesus. This is why we celebrate Jesus and thank God for him all year round, but especially during his birthday at Christmas. Can we thank God right now in prayer? Absolutely. Let's do that together, Miss Robin. Okay. Let's bow our heads, everyone. Dear God, thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Thank you for allowing us to celebrate hope, peace, joy, and love in our lives. We promise to magnify and celebrate your son, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, Miss Robin, I have a special announcement. Mm. Guess what? What? If you're watching us today, we're not live. I mean, uh, we're alive. We're live. We're live. <laughs> but this is a pre recorded faith formation because tomorrow, well, today, a little bit in just a few minutes, our children will be putting on the children's program, which is called the Symbols of Christmas in our morning service of worship. So that's exciting. But because they're doing that, they're literally practicing when we would normally be doing our live stream, our live streaming. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that's different. Yeah. I'll tell you something else that's different. What's that? Next Sunday, there will be no faith formation. No faith formation because we want our families and people to have special time together. And so next Sunday will be the first Sunday after Christmas. And all we have here at St. John's is our service of worship. It will be a service of lessons and carols and special music and some stories. Nice. So it's going to be, well, and the most important story is the story of Jesus' birth. Absolutely. So maybe you'll join us, whether by cyberspace or in person. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks for being with me, Miss Robin. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. This was fun. You're always so helpful. We had fun making our hearts together, kids. When you're at home, you should try to make a heart chain. See how good you do at that. All right? See you next time. Two weeks off. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.